Hello, welcome to Once More with Feeling. I'm your host, Edmund Scrivens, and joining me this week are... Richard and Pierce. So, this week will be a bit different from the previous weeks, as we'll be doing a bit of a year-end review. Not focusing on any specific album, just generally going over the music that's come out this year, or has at least become popular this year. And also right, generally okay. discussing what we've been listening to. Also going over going over a few bugbears that we've had, both individual and collective. So, starts off with the easy things of what we've been listening to recently. Who wants to go first? Uh, you go first, yes. I'm just thinking this through. God damn it, really. Well, I guess the last few weeks I've been listening to you know, the usual stuff, a lot of metal, a lot of J-pop, a lot of soundtrack. As usual, really. Interesting thing I've been listening to recently is probably Theo Fanny, who um, did a bunch of uh, arrangements based around uh, Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, which is rather impressive stuff. Hmm. Yeah, I've been meaning to look into that sort of thing. It's just been a case of there's so much that I've been having to update and also... <clears throat> getting a hold of the newest Vast album, which was a bit of a nightmare. Probably. Uh, you got it now? Or what? Uh, yeah, well, ironically, I managed to torrent it last night, and it also came through the mail this morning. Nice. Uh, there's always a way. They have two copies at once. Yeah. But I did actually buy the... Um, it was a signed, numbered copy of oh, nice. of the album. I did actually buy it before downloading it, so... Well, yeah, that's generally a good way of doing things. Yeah. If it's something you know you're going to like, then... Mm. Well, they had released a fair few of the songs already on YouTube, so I was sort of like, yep, yeah, I'm definitely getting this. Excellent. Yeah. For people who are interested, it's called Making Evening and Night... It's a bit of a sort of electronica rock with sort of Middle Eastern and Indian influences all over the place. It, they're a very difficult things. band to pin down, really, but generally, if you like your music experimental, then Vast is a good way to go. Because their influences yeah. are rather vast. Yeah. Hmm. Well, a slap for that. <laughs> yeah, especially as Vast actually stands for Visual Audio Sensory Theatre. That's pretty pretentious, but I like it. <laughs> you're, the, you're, you're the living embodiment of pretentious. I think we all are. Yeah. I'm not pretentious, I just know what I like. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. I don't um, know, I just know what I like, it's better than what you like. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, yeah, yeah. so uh, I guess I should say what I've been listening to, huh? Mm. Um, for those who haven't heard me on here before, because I haven't been on here before, so that'll be everyone. Uh, I am even more of a weird, weird <clears throat> piece of trash than Pierce is. So I have been listening to a lot of Japanese music, as usual. I, I've, I've been listening less and less to sort of albums and things. Um, I've been like, what I've been listening to recently is uh, there's this um, Japanese nightclub called uh, Mogura, spelled M O G R A. I don't even know whether it sounds something. It sounds like a Godzilla villain. Um, <laughs> But uh, they do all these. They have they, they um, stream a lot of their um, parties and things online. So um, you know, every now like once a month, they have these huge. They have these huge uh, about like nine hour parties, I think, and they and they stream all of it. And uh, just the other day, someone re- sort of has sort of recorded all of them and uh, released a big old batch pack of it. So I've just been listening to like endless amounts of it, just nonstop. Um, besides that, I've been listening to a lot of Vocaloid stuff because, uh, well, the, the latest Hatsune Miku Project Diva game came out, which is that with, oh man, I feel embarrassed saying that name out loud, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, they, there's, <laughs> despite Vocaloid having its ups and downs, there really are some amazing tracks on there, so, uh, yeah, I've been playing a lot of that and enjoy, and listening to a, listening to a lot, of, a lot of the music and finding new stuff in there, I guess. Um. That's pretty much all I have to offer on that front. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, nice, <laughs> Vocaloid well, is yeah, quite 
that doesn't love life, but I'm more ashamed of that than I guess. I don't know if I'm even willing to talk about that. Oh, go on. <laughs> too bad, too bad. <laughs> I, I think over the past few episodes I have quite definitively shown myself up both as a Devin Townsend fanboy and someone who really has the most bizarre taste so go for it <laughs> yeah yeah well Love Live it's kind of like Vocaloid except one it, despite not being computer synthesized voices it still manages to be significantly more embarrassing Jim that's it, it's like a rhythm game that's a spin-off to this one of my Japanese cartoons about a little high school girls making a band and yeah that if that doesn't say it all I don't know what will <laughs> that says too much yeah that says infinitely too much um yeah so to talk about myself not looking like a giant weeaboo I've also been listening to a lot of Kyo Bang Pan you haven't we all it's not this is true before. I yeah, only listen to yeah, so yeah. Yeah, I did see a lie, that was good. <laughs> Thing is, I only listen to Kiari when I'm with you guys. And that's not me being defensive or anything, I'm genuinely saying that. It's... Yeah, I mean, the thing is, I think with Kiari, is that her music videos are also out there. It's just like, even if, <laughs> even if you forget about her for a while, the moment you sort of see something pop up, like just one little link in your YouTube feed, I said, oh yeah, Carrie made another video. You go, oh god, what now? What now? <laughs> oh, and, you have to, and you kind of have to go look at that. Yeah. Um, for those who don't know, Kiari is kind of like, well, of course this is massive bias, but Kiari is like if you took the style of Lady Gaga and gave it substance. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> you see this, and her lyrics are all uh, complete gibberish, pretty much, even in Japanese. But, um, All um, I need to say uh, is that is primus for complete gibberish lyrics. That is primus true. are pretty gibberish. Although I'm on my YouTube and that is full of freaking reggae thanks to the witch. Wait, Baba. what? Baba. <laughs> <laughs> Who's talking about the witch played opening? Yeah, oh god, the fucking <laughs> witch reggae. Yeah, if, if any of you, I probably most of the listeners haven't seen witch played, thank, uh, and they're very lucky for that. But it's, it's, uh, it's a Japanese adaptation as well, sort of spin-off thing to the American comic Witchblade. Uh, the first opening theme was super duper edgy and uh, try hard, and then the, the second opening, despite sort of fighting to the death and Witchblades and magical gauntlets and things, it were, the second opening was just the most chilled out reggae song, and <laughs> I will never understand what prompted that decision, but I like it. <laughs> You know what's... Of course, just going on a brief tangent, as we always do with these episodes, the anime Witchblade is actually considered canon. Yeah, how awesome. <laughs> it's one of those, what, you're considering that canon? Why? It literally bears no semblance aside from this magical device that gives the wearer superpowers and gigantic Bosoms. I thought that was a web to be fair. <laughs> True. <laughs> Nothing else to add to this. It became a slice of life with Q about a bunch of guys living in an apartment complex with occasional magic shenanigans. Yeah. It, it was so, too unfocused. But I don't that's what made it horrible. Yeah. We gotta turn the conversation flat wave. We gotta get back on track. <laughs> Well, we can tang yeah, we can follow this tangent in terms of good anime openings. Ooh. Like, oh, no, man. going into soundtracks because you know I mean this has got a lot of soundtracks still. Mm. Yeah, I mean well, the new um, season of Mashishi has one of the best soundtracks this year, I'd say. I know. It's fantastic work. We watched some of the first season of Mashishi soundtracks, very kind of piano based with a bunch of traditional instruments. Mm -hmm. It just fits the theme perfectly. It's just really nice to chill out to. Yeah. I find that's one of the key draws with it, sort of, they match everything so perfectly and the music is one thing that I can imagine they were working day and night just trying to get it all crisp and perfect and working to fit the visuals. Oh yeah, speaking so of music well. fitting visuals, yeah? uh -huh. and on this, on this anime tangent of ours, um, have either of you seen Me Me Me? It's a yes, little short. I presume, yeah, I figured you might have seen it, yes. Uh, Ed, you'll have to see it at some point. 
um, it's a music video thing made for this um, animator oh, oh project way. thing. Um, I don't know if you have. Well, you might um, have shown me this. It's well, it's a music video with music from uh, Teddy Lloyd, who um, is well known for his work on uh, Pantheon's Stock and with Garter Belts, and uh, it is an incredibly sexy, incredibly violent, incredibly kind of yeah. disturbing thing. Yeah. Yeah, um, you did show me yeah. this. That is definitely worth checking out. Um, I'll put a link in the description. It's just... I, yeah, um, an audio-visual masterpiece that will leave <laughs> me kind of unsettled, I guess. But I enjoy it. Uh, there's not many things that phase me these days, but that was one of the few where I was just going, What? What? It's the kind of point where you start getting hypnotized by a legitimate and then someone comes along and vomits in someone's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever have that problem where you suddenly have a where you're looking at your computer and there are sexy girls and you and then and you're feeling oh yeah this is pretty soft and then suddenly a cute girl jumps on the screen and vomits in your mouth. It's not the ring where you're like the ring with a human. You had to bring <laughs> that up. We're really selling it here. <laughs> I don't know if you know. If, well, Teddy Lloyd's just amazing as it is. Um, yeah, check it out. Good music, good visuals. I don't really know what else to say about it, but it's definitely worth mentioning. It's something, something, uh, something we remember probably. So, you know, yeah. Memorable, that's I, I, I don't most, think I'll ever forget that. Most memorable point of 2014 for me in terms of music, probably. Although. Uh, I said it did happen pretty damn recently, so... Yeah. Like, what, a month ago, your flat? So. Yeah, yeah. So it, it was... Ago. Yeah, it was about a month ago. Mm. Because I'm pretty sure it came about just before I started my internship, so... So, uh... Sounds about right, yeah. yeah. Mm. But, yeah, oh, God. This year for music has been a bit weird, it seems. Well, what are you doing? I mean, the mainstream stuff is pretty terrible. Uh, there's a bunch of good releases, there's a bunch of crap releases. Yeah. So normal, really. There's the thing, though. Mainstream releases. Now, if you look at the Billboard 200 a few months ago, who got to number one? Simon Cowell, who actually decided to sing for once? I don't know. <laughs> Weird Al! Weird Al! That's just dying. Yeah. Did you just say Weird Al? Weird Al got to number one on the Billboard 200. That's pretty impressive. Well, he, there's a reason he's been he's stuck around so long. It's not just because of his parodies and stuff. Honestly, I've always preferred his original songs to uh, his jokes with myself. Mm. Like, uh, That's a Horoscope Today, Hardware Star, um, uh, Everything You Know Is Wrong. I always thought those were really funny and really inventive. I mean, I love his parodies, but the man's have got some really considerable creative talent that sort of goes beyond just uh, you know, your, your uh, average YouTube parody of whatever. Yeah. It's true. I mean, I was thinking the other day of watching the Christmas episode of the Top of the Pops, and it's like, but here's all the main releases that have been really popular throughout this entire year. I cannot remember a single one of them, apart <laughs> from the fact they weren't very good. Yeah. There's a reason why Top of the Pops is dead, you know. There's some generally good stuff on the show, it just wasn't in the, like, the 2014 review thing. Mm. Oh, well, yeah, but what I mean is, it used to be, I remember when I was a lot, when I was quite a bit younger, I can't really even remember when they axed it, you know, uh, and yeah, admittedly all of this stuff is on the internet now, and which kind of renders it useless, but I think part of the problem was, I think, wasn't, didn't it die kind of around the time that all this X Factor stuff and some of these, that sort of stuff reached its apex, it's like, um, it did, yeah, and these yeah. days it's like, oh yeah, here's the one that back for the Christmas episode, and the winner of this year is X Factor, God, well, fucking done. Exactly, exactly, and it was killed by these... Uh, I don't know, we'll have a class of reality shows, talent shows, it's... it's yeah. The other well, problem... Really in, in someone in Carol's species? Very much in sort of air quotes there that you can't see, and little air quotes for all of those things <laughs> I just said, but... Yeah. Um, uh, another problem yeah. is that people weren't really... Because Top of the Pops is recorded, they don't actually perform live. Well, no, no, no. And I think that's one of the key problems that did ultimately kill it because say what you like about X Factor and whatnot, they do perform live. And, yeah, this is true. And so the thing is though, if you look at pretty much anyone who's ever won that show, 
Mm. What have they ever actually done after like, the first main mainstream release? They just well, done it there, every there time. Were, there was Gareth Gates and Willie Young. Both of those guys got. I mean, that wasn't X Factor, but it was that, that same family of, of uh, well, that same kind of genre show. I mean, so um, it still has very little staying power, it seems. Yeah. Well. well what? From what I've seen, the bands and artists who have staying power are those who don't win it. Well, yeah, that's not possible. Well, well, but I'd argue that charts just don't matter as much anymore. I mean, uh, I say this, I don't mean nearly as much about music as either of you two. Well, um, but, I mean, like, from what, when I talk to my parents and I, and, and they talk about like trends in music and fashion and stuff when they were younger, it sounds like there was very much an in thing and an out thing. Yeah. And uh, there weren't any. Whereas nowadays, it seems like everything is completely and utterly divided up into subcultures and stuff. Like, everyone goes, like, I mean, like, it's entirely possible to have, like, for so many little trends that ultimately none of them are going to add up to whatever's in the big chart. And, it, and the big chart isn't representative of necessarily what everyone likes, because I don't think there is a what everyone likes anymore. Yeah. Well, Just indecisive people who haven't really made up their mind about their tastes yet. Well, um, going back to Billboard 200, in the same month, that Weird Al got to number one, you had Judas Priest getting to number six. Wow, okay. And Overkill, who are a thrash metal band, getting to number 11. Oh, oh really recently, ahead. actually. It reminds me, uh, one of the best, biggest things recently, I think it was last year, was like, oh yeah, baby, baby metal actually got like a major chart position as well. Like, yeah. I, I think th that's the thing. The charts are, in some ways, they are re representative of what people like because more people are just getting fed up of the general popular music offerings and well, going it sounds the same yeah yeah do you feel free to overturn my my completely retarded controversial statement <laughs> as i say i am an idiot well but, yeah there is um, merit to it when you consider that not one pop artist album this year went platinum Wow. That's true. The first year in, well, I think it might be the first, one of the first ones ever that hasn't been a single wise compatible. Yeah. I think the thing is, it, it just needs to be a reshuffle of exactly how we calculate this stuff, maybe. But, I mean, it gives, I think I think what really makes made me come to that kind of conclusion was the a couple of years back when there was the whole Rage Against the Machine thing, where that where uh, that got voted as a Christmas thing, oh, yeah. as a result of mass protest about the state of the charts, the Christmas... You know, people actually used to have to compete for the Christmas number one. I don't mm -hmm. know what it was this year. It was almost certainly X Factor again. It was X Factor, yeah. But, yeah, of course it was. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, it gets to show that people are discontented with the way these things are run because it's sucked the fun out of everything Yeah, with the way these things work. I mean, it's a pity that X Factor is what's gotten to number one when you consider that Christopher Lee released a Christmas single this year. Exactly. Well, <laughs> Christmas music, though. Like, think about it, how many... Christmas songs have actually like they like, become popular and stayed within the last decade or more. There's none of them. Yeah. Just all the Christmas stuff is uh, usually at least like ten years old, if not older. I want to hear. I want to hear "Killing in the Name of Song" uh, sung in churches at, at Christmas every year. <laughs> oh, that <laughs> would be <laughs> glorious. Play with an organ. Play with an organ. Play with an organ and the entire congregation's going "Killing in the Name of." <laughs> <laughs> These old grannies going, Fuck you! I won't do what you tell me! <laughs> Absolutely, that is what is needed. A foot in the fucking head! <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what we need. Oh. I just want to cover an album of Rage Against the Teen Song with Darling Church Choir now. I would totally buy that. <laughs> I would as well. But this, this is the thing. In a way, we are indicative of what the general population wants. We want more that's different. Yeah. We, I mean, even if it sucks, we want something. That, we want something else. Anything else than this populist either objectification of various things that is masquerading as uh, empowerment ballads. Megan Trainer, fuck you. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, that's a rant for later on. Or it's just. It's still more of the party music! And I'm sick of it! Y yeah, yeah. I mean, I think. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? Everyone wants something different. But at the same time, the charts are designed to represent what most people are buying. Mm. 
so clearly, clearly, that, that's clearly, that's clearly, clearly at odds. Well, of course, because it doesn't necessarily have to be a majority. What the majority of people are buying, it just has to be a big, a bigger, small amount, doesn't it? You know? Well, so, yeah, there's less people overall <laughs> buying chart music. It's still possible for that stuff to be in the lead because yeah. less people overall are buying stuff. So. Yeah. Well, if you think of it. You know, think of it like in election terms. You know, as thirty-four percent turnout of the population. Yeah, that's exactly it. That's enough and for an election to, to win. So. As well. Hmm. And everyone hates the turnout of elections as well. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. So it really is one of those. Hang on, if you've got issues with the state of music, I mean. Okay, I download music. I am a horrible pirate. I am. So am I. We all are, apparently. Yeah, but I still buy music as well. As I was saying earlier, I did specifically buy the new Vast album. That's the thing, though. I mean, most of the albums I've listened to this year that I would consider, you know, quality albums, I went out and bought. Yeah. So the thing, I buy the stuff I like, and there's so much stuff that you know I don't really care about. It's like, uh, I downloaded it. It wasn't great. If I like something, I'll go out and pay good money for it. Yeah. I can only imagine what it would be like if, if the charts measured things that people imported or whatever as well. I mean, I know that's possible, do. but... Fun? They do? What? I wish they should do. I mean, they, well, they should do, but it's probably pretty difficult to do, let's face it. But, I mean, it would be interesting to see what would happen if... Mm. Well, again, if baby metal can make it into the charts, then maybe they do. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, I would love if somehow you know a band like vast or fear factory or um hell even nickelback as much as we revile <laughs> them <laughs> i would give anything for even them to get in the charts because at least it would actually be indicative of what people are interested in even if it's terrible <laughs> this is true Everybody's well like, oh, but I listen to the same stuff everyone else does. I mean, uh, okay. I, I think this is a good way to segue into our most hey, reviled hey. tracks of this year, really. I thought, are you going where I think you're going with this? <laughs> where do you think I might be going? Does this involve a song about li being liberated and then proceeding to hide yourself in a nice castle and be miserable after all of that happiness? <laughs> It, it may well do so, yes. <laughs> oh, oh no, nice. that, that's that's for later in the show. That's a ramp for sort of overplayed songs this year. Okay, that's <laughs> But uh, I think most hated. Think something that I have frequently gone into apoplectic rage over. Just my, huh? appreciation, my, my appreciation of shitty Denver music. <laughs> No, it's something you hate as well. It's in fact, it pretty much overnight was blanketed as terrible. Blanketed as terrible overnight. Mm. Mm. I honestly don't know. I, I, he asked me. Okay, it does link into earlier on in the discussion with being weeaboo. Being weeaboo. I know exactly where this is going now. Okay, <laughs> you may as well you may as well just say it out because I am pretty dense. Well, where do you think it's going, Pierce? Hello, Kitty. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. I, I, I'm just, before we go into any more of the discussion, I am going to start it off with this. Fuck you, Avril Lavigne! I will murder you! Okay, I won't, but that's how angry it makes me. <laughs> Disclaimer, I will not actually murder anyone, even if I sound angry enough to do so. How old is Avril Lavigne now, anyway? Uh, oh, God. She must be in her 30s now. Oh, yeah, I mean... She's not uh, old. She's not old, but at the same time, <laughs> I, don't, I, just, I feel like. She, oh no, she's actually, she's actually, I, yeah, about thirty. I yeah, I get, but I, I, I felt it was kind of weird seeing her doing that whole uh, hips to glasses, shaved head look, shaved side of the head look thing, with the rest. What was it even she wearing? She had like this weird kind of Harajuku-y 
you know, whatever. I, I think it was just some... some it, it, it kind of smacked of trying to be sort of a weird Lolita-type get-up. I, I don't even know what the fuck she was wearing. It just... It's very Harajuku fashion. It's kind of... Well, I say this not knowing an ounce of Harajuku fashion, but I mean, like, um, it made me think of kind of... It made me think of Carrie, except decidedly watered down because, of course, no... It's, well, much like Lady Gaga, you can't emulate Gary, effectively. Mm. But um, there's definitely that kind of let's be kind of kooky kind of thing about it. Yeah. But it was, it was, I don't know. I, I get, I'm, looking back on it, it's not as offensive as I remember it, but I, I don't know. Maybe it's, it's just because I don't, it does, it seems very much like a, a teenage girl kind of thing to do. Uh, I, I don't have a problem with I don't have a, <laughs> I don't have a problem with looking however you want to look. I mean, it's that just. Me. I mean, I, I, I know I'm so I'm not exactly uh, the most fashionable one out there, but I, I choose how to dress how I want. But I get the feeling that she was just kind of trying a bit too hard. Yeah, it. Ju- that's. I think that's the key issue. I mean, okay, I've never liked Avril Lavigne. I've never been a fan of her music. It's always felt very whiny and very teenage angsty, and. I don't think she was a teenager. Yeah, 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 but she never grew out of that. That's the problem. It's I think like I can see where you're coming from. I mean, I secretly don't entirely hate Skater Boy as much as it's an awful, awful thing. <laughs> I recognise it's an awful thing, but you know, I, I kind of it, it has a kind of nice melody and stuff. Sweating bullets desperately <laughs> to regain my face. <laughs> my face right now is metaphorically kind of like that face from Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> Yeah, it I just. Mean, what, does, what does the song even have to do with Heaven Kitty? Why is it? I, I, I guess the thing is, it's trying to be accessible and it's trying to be like. Because the thing was, she made the song to respond to a Japanese audience because one of her albums did really well over there. And she was like, oh, cool, the Japanese like me. I guess I'll make a song for them then. So, what pandering. I'm a gigantic weeaboo. Well, yeah, I mean, Gwen Stefani has proved that trying to do that isn't necessarily the best idea. <laughs> Ugh. Sorry, just thinking back to um well, uh, funny anything. Yeah, <laughs> well Hollaback like, Girl, the like, opening to that video. Oh god. I, I like Gwen Stefani when she was in in no doubt. And I think they're back together now, but so I guess I should shut up. But <laughs> Well um, Jury's out <laughs> on that, so Yeah, but um I, <laughs> the point is get, developing an obsession with Harajuku fashion is a pretty effective way of embarrassing yourself. I yeah, think. I mean, um, it would have. The key problem with the song is, well, it's more with the music video than the song itself. Although the song is horrendous sound-wise, I mean, production quality is all over the place. Everything is a discordant mess. I mean, it's like there's bits of dubstep to- thrown in randomly. The general beat of it is actually salvageable. Which is the most depressing thing about the song. It's like it's so many songs that are along those lines where there's aspects that are salvageable, but when you put it in a hole, it's just this homogenous mess of Ed, you, cacophonous you, you noise. Clearly, you clearly remember this song a lot better than I do. What well, I, I did listen is, to it a couple I'm of days ago. To I remember walking, uh, walking through a cupcake shop. I remember that ridiculous haircut. I say, I say immediately turning into an old man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> get a proper haircut, you damn, you damn lass, or whatever. But um, I remember her jumping up and down in a hot, in like super speed motion, and and I thought, oh yeah, and her eating sushi or something in like super speed. Yeah. And her dancing around the sound of Japanese railway crossings. Yeah. Um, I mean. I, I am a weeaboo, I confess, <laughs> but that, that, this is, this is even, even as a weeaboo, this is kind of the thing, even my, um, 
my 14 year old Naruto watching hockey eating mess of herself would look upon with distaste <laughs> and well if that, if that would offend me then which I'm pretty sure it would you can only imagine how much this pains me now as, as, an, as an ascended 8th level weirdo yeah. well I mean I come from a background of right just going back to sort of Avril Lavigne's early roots where she was sort of trying to be punk but failing miserably it's called pop punk yeah. Yeah. there's an entire genre <laughs> dedicated to that <laughs> That's true. Yeah, but even <laughs> by pop punk that. standards, <laughs> even by pop punk standards, she was just awful. But full disclosure, I I do come from a background of listening to heavy metal, rock, and punk, and that's probably why I've always had a disdain for Avril Lavigne. But I could appreciate that there was some sort of musical merit to some of her songs. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, back when I was a young guy, I did, in fact, listen to her first album. And it actually was admittedly kind of enjoyable. Mm. But everything after that, it's just going downhill, even from there. Yeah. We're trapped. In, in this conversation, currently featured backpedaling. Backpedaling as hard as we can while trying to make a point. But we're running forwards whilst moving our legs backwards as fast as we can. <laughs> I don't like, it's kind of like we're, we're running backwards on a very fast moving treadmill. Listen, we're basically we're realizing OK Go. <laughs> I'm sorry, we're not cool enough for that. We're more just falling off the treadmill and bumping into the wall. But anyway, um, getting to my point, it just. Another point. Yes, shut up. <laughs> Getting to my point, there seems to be some struggles to try and get back to the sort of pop punk roots. And then it's like she's suffering from bipolar disorder, where she's going, Yes, I want to be more punky in this song. No, I'm going to be all dubstep and weird and make no logical sense. I think, honestly, the way some various trends in fashion and music seem to have gone. It's kind of more like having a multiple personality disorder and having multiple. So it's like trying to impress multiple images that don't mix. Yeah. Into the same song to attract a wider audience, but it just doesn't seem to work very well. Yeah. I don't know if maybe I don't know if I'm seeing things here. Well, hearing things, because <laughs> uh, I mean, like the the weird dubstep points, um, going really hard on trying to be kind of I don't know Japanesey, I guess. Yeah. But, uh, and uh, and the weird guitar sounds. It's uh, there's so many little like things there that that clash, but are quite clearly trying to attract the same kind of age group and stuff. Yeah, and, uh, I'm, I'm reading a lot into it. But. Um, no, I think the thing is there is a lot to read into it, and it's just trying to f figure out what exactly is going on. I mean, I would like to hear a cover of it just to see if it could be done well and actually made to sound like a song instead of a a KFC bowl. <laughs> well, <I'll get> bucket. <laughs> I, I think the problem is it, it's just. Wait, 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 so you're saying this is like the song version of Witchblade? The, 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 no, well, Witchblade. I... Witchblade was more salvageable because Witchblade could have worked as one of two things, either as just going full fantasy or going more for the slice of life aspects and seeing how this woman could deal with being some sort of strange mystical being whilst still being a mother. Yeah. This the song is, is with, more with like the Zero Seven Ghost of songs. But nothing happens? <laughs> No, a lot, a lot of inconsequential stuff happens. You know, it's Wait, just. Pink a... floppy dragon somewhere. Huh? Uh, the pink, pink floppy dragon. dragon. Um, I think, I think the thing is with with this Hello Kitty thing, it's utterly insubstantial. It's the most superficial thing ever. I mean, do you, do you guys even remember what the lyrics were? Predominantly, what I remember is Hello Kitty, you're so pretty. I don't actually remember. Were there any other lyrics? I mean, even if, if there were, they, the, those those lines I just said, they, they were repeated so much throughout the song, and I don't remember anything else. It's, the point, it's like, 
What is this song about? There's it's something. About absolutely nothing. There's, there's something it's about a, a pillow fight. Was well, something think, about you know just her uh, using random wait. Japanese phrases. I, I, oh, yeah. I'm actually... Oh yeah, the Kikikawai, I even forgot that happened there for a moment. <laughs> How <laughs> did you forget <laughs> that? I mean, it's the most pervasive, annoying aspect of the song, even with the dubstep. And if you're more annoying than dubstep, you have managed an achievement. Oh, hey, 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 I have shaving on top of everything else. Absolutely disgusting. <laughs> but, but, um, I think uh, I think that there was very, there was sort of kind of lesbian undertones or something. Was there? I think it was kind of like like yeah, they come over and we'll fight, have a pillow fight in our underwear or whatever. Uh, I'm just looking up the lyrics because yeah, that, 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 well. yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, the, 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 I think the big the problem is something is happening, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> either I'm really dumb or Avril Lavigne is uh, not the master singer songwriter I thought she was. <laughs> you know, after that entire sequence that Bonnie went in her underwear, just have a live lesson. Um, wake up, I've got a secret. Pinky swear you're going to keep it. I've got something you need to see. I don't think, yeah. yeah I I've think, about that. Yeah, I've got, it, feel, it feels uh, like it's being sort of uh, provocative. But I've got being provocative. I'd say controversial, but it isn't. It's <laughs> um, yeah. I've got the lyrics up here. Homosexual crushes are not are not controversial. It, it's, but it's definitely trying to sort of go. Oh, look at that! Look at that! She's doing something shocking. Look at her with her mate. Look with that weird look she's got going on. And she's in Japan. Look how wacky. And oh, she's singing about pillow fights in your underwear. Well, oh, am I supposed to be shocked? Am well, I there's. To be, <laughs> Something. Well, you've hit the nail on the head because it's like there's bits like it's time for spin the bottle. Not gonna talk about it tomorrow. Keep it just between you and me. Um, Are we supposed to be offended? I, I think that now, now that I remember, yeah, that 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 was, that was what frustrated me more than anything else. Really, it was just uh, yeah, it's... trying to make something controversial or shocking when there absolutely wasn't anything. I mean, it's kind of the same thing as the whole Katy Perry, I Kiss a Girl thing. I mean, I, I, I remember, I mean, I Wait that a fucking song time. has... Yeah, but the uh, voices of the song, writers, like, Avril Lavigne, Chad Kruger. Ah! What? Who is Chad Kruger? This is Probably Nickelback. Music. Nickelback. Oh my god, what, <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know about Nickelback. Oh, you know, they suck, and I've heard a few of their songs. I, ne I never decided to inquire further or learn who was the villain behind it. I, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> that, a lot of that, that is a match made in my darkest nightmares. The realm where only the nightmares... I, I haven't even had nightmares that bad. That coupling... <laughs> Chad Kroger and Avril Lavigne it's just a, it's like getting Sunny D and putting Strongbow in it it's already well, fucked <laughs> well that would explain it then this, this whole thing went wrong because Chad Kroger is Avril Lavigne's spirit animal <laughs> <laughs> he, appe he appears to her in the form of Hello Kitty Avril Lavigne Avril Lavigne <laughs> It's like getting a Burberry cap and putting radios on the side. <laughs> I don't even like your man. Shut up, I'm a cute cat. <laughs> <laughs> the whole of my magical powers. Oh, God. <laughs> my sorceress abilities to make controversy out of nothing. <laughs> but, I mean, well, just, just to finish up my point, I think it's, like, whilst I think Katy Perry's thing didn't sound nearly as horrifying, I think there's the same principle at the heart, at the absolute core of it, and that's making mountains out of, well, not even mole holes. Yeah. <laughs> Fact well, of life. Well, getting on to that, as saying about Katy Perry, I think the key thing is, whilst, again, Katy Perry is the most atrocious pop singer ever to have lived, that's just my opinion, but it's true, so you should take that's, it as fact. That's not how you spell Nicki Minaj. <laughs> I would take Nicki Minaj any day of the week over Katy Perry. Welcome to the hate car, where we discuss only bad things and never what makes us happy. <laughs> what, you, Kip? Uh, oh, 
<laughs> anyway, you can't say it right now, but I'm making that face. Um, that um, Nigel Farage. <laughs> what? What the sort of? He looks like Kermit the Frog holding in a fart. Kermit the Frog has a chin. <laughs> <laughs> oh! But you know what? Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, music. Before we turn into the uh, the politics cast or whatever. <laughs> You're listening vote to the vote. Daily Politics. Vote, vote more with feeling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to have a lot of featurettes just for all these tangents we've raised. Anyway, back to the point. Um, yes, please do. Although Katy Perry is horrifying and I absolutely despise I Kissed a Girl yeah. to its very core because I had to listen oh, yeah. to it every day for three fucking months multiple mm -hmm. times a day not because it was on the radio but because my work colleagues would play it yeah 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 okay the key difference is that actually functionally worked as a provocative song because the lyrics well, were actually focused it wasn't just people this people did get kind of outraged in there people were like why this is a scandal yeah but Hello Kitty is so discordant, not just in the Munich... Munich? <laughs> Freudian slip there! It's in Japan there, not Munich. <laughs> yeah, but it feels like I've been stuck in Munich. Um, anyway, uh, not just in the music, but the lyrics are just so disparate, and you can't... Okay, there are vague undertones, but there's nothing really to cement it in anything specific. It's just, you know, it's That's a kid's it. song when you really get down to it. When you actually look yeah. at the lyrics, aside from the spin the bottle line, it is a kid's song. Well, that, I'm pretty sure there was a line about having a sexy party in your underwear, wasn't there? Nope. Well, kind of. No, it just says, Mum's not home tonight, so we can all roll around, have a pillow fight, like a major raya, rager, OMFG. Fair enough. I think the, pro the problem know, is, is, those, is those dubstep wubs just act like their brain erases. Oh, you wait, no. exactly what's happened in the last Sorry. Of song. Sorry. Just, you, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> Sorry, you're right, Piss. Let's play Truth or Dare now. We can roll around in our wonder wet. Wonder where? Ah! <laughs> wonder where? <laughs> wonder where? <laughs> In our underwear, how every silly kitty should be. Okay, maybe I was. Maybe I just blanked out that bit because it was. Uh, it's too kiddy a song to, it's too kiddy a song for us to show we have grown up out of responsible members of society to listen to but at the same time the content is kind of I don't know it, I'd say it's well no it's not it, it's not good for little kids no, it's, it's a teenager teenagers, song but even teenagers even teenagers I would assume are probably a little bit beyond the yeah. content that is suggested because it's like oh this was gay not really yeah. <laughs> I mean what more, more than enough teenagers know by now it's kind of shocking it, it's kind of like I know what it would be it's for the six months when you've just turned 13 <laughs> think about yeah. it when you've just turned right. 13 you've realized you're a teenager and there are all these things that you kind of are on the cusp of being able to do so that's what it's for but six months later you'll just be sort of like eh, bored now yeah I remember when I, when, I, when I turned 13 I was like how long is it until I can drive a car? And then you realise that there are a whole lot of things that you can actually learn to drive a foreign car, like like a forklift truck or a um, uh, a tractor. Or a co I think you can even actually learn to drive a combine harvester before then or something like that. <laughs> I was like, and I was thinking, ah oh, man, I better look cool driving one of those car engines. Fair enough. <laughs> you know, I think it's the same kind of thing with, with, with maybe it's the same kind of thing with music. Oh man, don't yeah. wait to listen to all this stuff. <laughs> And then you realise you're just kind of stuck with that little meme. And it's like, eh, I guess I can wait. <laughs> of course, for me, I didn't get that because I was raised on Metallica, Alice Cooper, the Sex Pistols, you know, all the really filthy stuff that it's sort of like I became inured to it. So I was all like, eh, this, mm. this is meant to be provocative. They were doing this shit 40 years ago. Fuck off. But, but, the, but, the, but the kitties, they're saying hello and they are insinuating lesbianism. <laughs>
Go and listen to an Alanis Morissette CD and really hear some shocking stuff. Alanis Morissette isn't even that shocking, but it's more provocative than this. And that was 20 that fucking years ago! Huh? I get the feeling that maybe we should have talked, maybe we've talked about this long enough. I think, how long have we, we've actually been talking about Hello Kitty? <laughs> oh Jesus, about 20 minutes. <laughs> stop, stop, abort mission, get off the boat, get off the ride. It is, it is 2017, welcome to the future. <laughs> well, I'm expecting this Can't to... Help. I fully expect this to be a long podcast anyway, because it's a year-end review. Oh, right, yeah. But, um, just a few things to touch upon just in the hate camp for me uh oh god yeah shake it off by taylor swift Ugh. i don't think i've actually heard that yet it's a really good thing count yourself lucky it's basically you know how there are a lot of rap songs these days that are targeted against the haters i don't know why yeah. i did that accent but it seemed appropriate <laughs> It came with the, it's not an accent you can rap in, though. <laughs> I'd like to hear you turn around with that. <laughs> hey, I can't rap in the... <laughs> but anyway, yeah, it's a song targeted against the haters. Or oh, this song. Yeah, I, I, personally, I find... Well, I don't know. Well, Taylor Swift is... I, I am reiterating what another reviewer said, but she is not someone who wears criticism well. Mm. She... the slightest criticism, and as was said, she will devote several pages to her burn book. You know, it can be the slightest thing, and so she's trying to suggest that she just shakes all the criticisms off. Yeah, she doesn't. Well, it's sort of like, if you really shook them off, you wouldn't be bringing them up. That's a good point. It's kind of a yeah, cyclical it. argument, really. It's like that one song that plays at work against me, where it's like, I hate love songs, so this is a love song I'm writing about how I hate love songs. It's like, what? Yeah. Who is that um, by? I have no idea. It's one of the ones on the radio at work of people no one's ever heard of. Ah. Uh. Yeah, kind of reminds me of how there was that um, kind of online fisticuffs between Snoop Dogg and what was the name? The, the one who did that song, Fancy. Oh, um, oh. Iggy Azalea. Iggy Azalea, that's, that's the one. I, like, I, I don't care. Like, what's up with all this politics and stuff about like all oh, certain rappers and places? It's, it's beginning to get kind of like professional wrestling without the wrestling. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> actually, it's funny. Uh, you saying it, it, about that? Snoop Dogg or Iggy Azalea don't get thrown through a table. I will lose interest in this entire disaster. <laughs> oh, you, you're just putting me in mind of um, you know, way back when when we had the whole uh, Chris Brown Rihanna debacle. Yeah. Um, yeah. How CM Punk actually called Chris Brown out and basically said, um, essentially he said, come at me, bro. Oh, right, right. <laughs> he actually <laughs> challenged Chris Brown. I would have paid any amount of money to see that match. That would have been fun. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. I just think I about the same thing with Uwe Ball. <laughs> yeah, I, I knew you were going to bring that up. <laughs> King Uwe Ball. Well, ball. that's boxing, not wrestling. But, yeah, but not so really, because boxing is boring, enough. comparatively uh, speaking. I mean, well, yeah, but um, I know, yeah, I know what you mean though, because songs, songs addressing haters or songs. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I see this not having heard much. So, well, these, many of these kinds of songs, but I, I don't find it interesting as a concept. There's got to be something else to, to rap about. Yeah, I mean, other than other than people you dislike. Yeah, I mean, the key problem is they mistake singing about haters with sort of anti-bullying songs. That's the kind of vibe I get from a lot of them. It's one of those, no, you're not singing an anti-bullying song. All you're singing about is... Boys, <clears throat> uh, people who, sh who dislike me sure are wrong. Mm. Oh no, well, IGN gave me a 7 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It, well, it's one of those how to prove that you do actually give a shit about what people say. Hey, people who don't like me, listen to this song about how I don't care how much you dislike me. Cyclical argument. Yeah. Well, that's kind of like why I find, I'm like, I've, I've 
listen, well, when Pierce and I, when we were all living together, um, I, I mean, I've listened to a bunch of Eminem because Pierce likes that, and uh, I mean, like, it, those songs are, are great because it's just like a lot of it. It's not about I'm a celebrity doesn't like me. I will ship on them in this song. You know, I, to be honest, I was kind of frustrated when I heard all this stuff about eighty years earlier or whatever because it's just like I thought. I, I remember listening to Fancy and thinking this is a pretty neat song. It's kind of tongue in cheek. You see. Why I'm great. I mean, a lot of, admittedly, I think maybe that <laughs> I can do with songs less about why I'm great or whatever as well. But mm. I know, I just thought it was a neat song and then saying, oh, and broiled in celebrity drama. And I was like, oh, man, that kills it. Yeah. I mean, I'm. That kills it. I was, I was enjoying this. I mean, I'm personally not a fan of fantasy, but that's just because it's a bit too minimalist for my liking. I can get that. I, I just enjoy it because I find, I, I just find, I think fancy is such a flouncy word that is absolutely hysterical. Yeah. I, I get the feeling that it was kind of on purpose, purposely funny, and that kind of, it, it got me, it tickled me. That's fair enough. Uh, oh god, we get back to Chris Brown with Loyal. Ugh, that was a, huh? I didn't know this. I'd like to meet Uh, basically, oh god, well... It's one of those songs complaining about how women are unfaithful. Chris uh, Brown uh, and uh, Lil Wayne rapping about how women are unfaithful. Please allow me a second to light my bubble pipe in the stage. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please do go on. And what makes it worse is you go through the lyrics and... They're not faithful either! So it just becomes the most paradoxical song in existence! Well, uh, so having a song about hating love songs while writing a love song about how you hate love songs is kind of paradoxical. So. Funny enough, that kind of reminds me of something. I mean, like, uh, I work as a news agent, and uh, the other thing, I, it, it reminds me of the whole, um, there was a thing, uh, usually I wouldn't know, but uh, about Mel B of Spice Girls fame and how who now judges on the X Factor for whatever reason and uh, her jerk bag husband and that who, or whatever I assume he's a jerk bag that is what the son tells me so it must be true <laughs> um, and there's like apparently like there's a thing going on maybe he hit her or whatever and, it, and, and uh, it's like oh faithfulness and then there was a photo on the front of it that on the front of the paper that just crept me up you see do you mind if you guys remember that um, thing from years ago? So, my name is John and I hate every single one of you. That no. doesn't ring any bells. Oh, god damn it. it <laughs> now I've said this for nothing. I've said it for nothing! But, whatever. It was just so old, dumb internet joke uh, about how successful my life is and stuff. And it was just this picture of some guy who looked like he was off Jersey Shore. Oh, cool. <laughs> um, yeah, but it was just a photo that looked exactly like it, and just made me—it th- was just made me think of what you were saying there about some unfaithful people, and I forget the entire relevance. This was a bad move. <laughs> I I found myself into a corner, about ready to jump off the cliff of my own volition. Right, moving swiftly on. Yes, please. Um, um, go flog yourself. <laughs> Find me a Molly and I will. Sorry? Find me a Molly and I will. Sorry about Molly. <laughs> oh! I sure do like Vlog and Molly, but I don't know if they've done anything else recently, so... <coughs> Alright. Uh, and not as far as I know. Um, but anyway, uh, uh, there is another song that sticks out for me, but... I'll go into that a bit after you two have actually had a chance to say your pieces on songs you've had issue with. Songs we've had issue with? Yeah. Ah, uh, so, uh, songs to talk shit about. Um, uh, there's only one I can really think of right now, and I know you can talk about it later. So, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, to be honest, I think I'm, I'm on the same page. Uh, honestly, I generally, I when I find music, I get along with it. Uh, or I immediately stop listening to it. <laughs> <laughs> so, because I was, I'm not a masochist like you are, I think. Um, so, it is say, true. I'm I am. Uh, you're a beat. Huh? <laughs> well, that's how you know, Ed does kind of you know do music for a living. I think. Yeah. yeah. I'm, so I'm for- going to get us to deal with this shit. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, but, I uh, have to listen to it. Um, okay, so just as a sort of cut off for this. Fuck you, Megan Trainer. 
Yes, oh, that, that is a good example of uh, something that is pretty terrible. I, I, I don't think we really need to even go into that one because it has been discussed to death about how completely abhorrent all about that base is in concept and execution. The only good I thing going... Know a new version of Blurred Lines, really. Yeah. Oh, that name is, uh... In fact, it feels yeah. like it is this year's Blurred Lines. Cause... I know which is worse. I, huh? I know which one's worse. I would be inclined to I say Blurred Lines is worse, because at least you can argue that there's a certain amount of positivity that can be derived from all about that base. It's not like you could confuse it rape. for a rape song. I mean... Which Blurred Lines really is rape. Yeah. All I'm going to say for everyone is look up Stone Temple Pilots sex type thing and then listen to it side by side with Blurred Lines and you will be horrified with how much it reminds you of. Um, I'm pretty sure Robin Thicke also recorded an entire album dedicated to his estranged wife. Yeah, oh god. And that whole issue was super duper creepy, and then he didn't kind of harass her with it, I think, or something. Yeah. <laughs> I say slandering, but without also not knowing the entire fact of it, but I know it was kind of messed up. Oh, it's not slander. You watch the videos. Well, I say it's like that because I'm looking at the, I'm saying it without verifying it. Oh, I have um, watched some of the videos and trust me, you are not saying anything that's slanderous. It is really quite creepy and disturbing, and oh, okay. all I need to say is I would not be surprised if a restraining order and police protection was actually called for. I am not speaking hyperbole, I am dead serious. Honestly, when a, when a guy has a, a load of balloons spelling up Robin Thicke has a big dick in his in one of his music videos, I'm not entirely surprised. That you will be I amazed with the iceberg. Comparatively, Blood Lines is like loving you. Tip of the ice cock. <laughs> <laughs> Just a tip. <laughs> Said the nun to the vicar. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, but yeah, I mean, all about that bass, I will say this much, at least the music itself doesn't fill me with dread. There are not many songs which I can actually listen to and immediately recoil from. Blurred Lines does that, all about that bass doesn't, so at least it has that going for it. I think it's kind of like, come to think of it, it's kind of like what you were saying about the fancy minimalism thing. It's like, um, the part of what's kind of off-putting about Blurred Lines is the way it's just like, it's those weird sort of, I know, it sounds kind of like those weird little drum things that they do, all sort of... Yeah. There, it's, there's something kind of, that's kind of weirdly empty, apart just hearing those, that simple melody and uh, that, you know, I'm using the wrong terms again, help me, I'm not, I'm not good at music. That, that, that simple little Stripped thing in the back down. Part. I think that's yeah. the, the stripped down yeah. effect. Yeah, it's that, it's, it's, it's that sort of piano we no, no, I don't even know what to call it, help. The the sound of, the song in the background and uh, the little beats, and then sort of, there's something disarmingly kind of, it sounds like something you might hear on CBBS. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, it actually cuts against humanity's cards, stripping down and watching, stripping down and watching CBBS. <laughs> it's, it, there's just something that sounds kind of inherently childish about it. Yeah. And then, of course, Give those whispery vocals that kind of sound like Michael Jackson in kind of parody, you know what I mean? Mm. Uh, it's, it's a, if we can't hear what I'm trying to say. I mean, I, obviously, I know Michael Jackson does sound like that, but it's kind of the kind of voice you might hear someone do on South Park or whatever trying to sound like Michael Jackson. So, that's true. That's also basically, true. oh god, now I'm just imagining <laughs> Cartman singing it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <more laughs> Yeah, but basically, <laughs> I, 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 no, I, but basically what, what I mean is, what I mean is, um, as if the whole rapey nature of that song wasn't bad enough, it just, I mean, it has the kind of weirdly childish element to it as well, which makes yeah. it even more disconcerting. That's the problem with it. It's minimalist, and it strips down to bare bones, child bones. Yeah. It's like a child skeleton being molested. You're molesting an under. Oh God! So we've got molesting an under so, child. So it's gone. We've 
we've somehow managed to make it worse. Originally, it was just implied rape. Now we've made it implied necrophiliac child rape. Yes, that is exactly the problem. <laughs> oh, God. That's still probably just the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Actually, tip of the iceberg. That gives us a good segue. Tip of the boner. That's true. <laughs> no, that's that's a that breaks, that breaks boner. Down. <laughs> so, moving swiftly on before we make this any worse and we just expel let, all our hatred. I'm to let that part go. <laughs> Yes! <laughs> so, <laughs> I believe we all are due to say this about a particular song that has been plaguing all lands for the past year since the film was released. Well, I think really a lot of my problem with it is that it's to do with the larger context of the film and the fact that it just generally doesn't seem quite right to me. But as even as a film, as a song on its own right, it's kind of lazy. It's a four chord thing. Not that I'm, not that four chord things are bad, but they could have done better. Yeah. Also, yeah, worms. Yeah, it is a worms. Well, it could be worse. It could be a brain piranha, but hungry for worms. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I, I mean, I'll admit, I did initially like the song. I mean, admittedly, m I did have a certain amount of bias because for the benefit of the audience, I'm just going to say a friend of ours did her own version of it and that was my first interaction with it. So I've got that so little bit of bias towards that's a, that's it. That's a decidedly better exposure than mine was. My, my first exposure was via, uh, via a Space Jam mashup. <laughs> what? <laughs> I have got to, to hear that. Was a, was, uh, a slam jam, space jam um, mashup, you know, where the, uh, where you know it had that stupid. Come on and slam. Well, come on and the jam. jam. Yeah, it had that ridiculous drum beat in the background, mashed up with the Let It Go, and instead of snowflakes, it had um, basketball. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, you know how these things go. You know how these things go. They're all like that. My most recent interaction with it, apart from the film itself, was a metal cover, which I think pretty good. I can understand that being pretty good. But yeah, <laughs> honestly, I was pretty disaffected at first, because at first it was, a, well, wait, no, disaffected is the wrong word, because that actually sounds like I'm actually put off. I was just kind of amused by the whole thing. Yeah, and... The fact is, it's just so... It's everywhere. It's been used in adverts and stuff. It's just really annoying. 